Hi all, my name is Mess Barnkop from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we are taking a look at this mobile base station antenna. It is a Catherine dual panel, which means it can operate at both 900 and 1800 MHz. In order to utilize both GSM, which is 2G and 3G technologies. So it's a pretty huge object. As you can see here, it takes up the whole length of my work desk. And if we compare it to what it actually looks like when it sits on top of a tower, they are pretty big when you get them down into your own hands. So let's first take a look at the datasheet for this antenna and then take it apart and look at how the design is. <clears throat> Here at the bottom we can see we have the two 7 16 connectors, one for the plus 45 and one for minus 45, and each has both frequencies on the input or output cable here. Now the remote electrical tilt would connect to this rod here. We can see it is marked from 0 to 10 degrees, where the 10 degrees was only for the 900 megahertz part, and the um, 1800 megahertz part can only do 0 to 2 degrees of tilt. But we will see once inside that this actuates the phase shifter. The data sheet tells us everything we really want to know. We can see here it is a dual band panel, means it can operate at the 900 and 1800 MHz range, has an integrated combiner, has adjustable electrical down tilt, and if we look further down here we can see all the different yeah, vertical horizontal patterns and the max power output and all the yeah, dampenings and amplification factors. So it gets interesting once we get down to these polarization charts. What we see here is for 1900 MHz and 1800 megahertz, And we have to imagine we have the antenna sitting here and here we have the mast going up like that. So we can see that we have a area of coverage like an egg when looking from on top of the antenna but from looking to the side of the antenna we can see it's actually quite a small lobe here and when we look up at to, onto the 1800 megahertz it's even narrower so this is why you would typically see these mounted like this sitting on top of the uh, the antenna simply because the slope has to point more downwards towards buildings and where people actually walk around. Now the integrated combiner that we will see, we can see we have the two ports at the bottom of the panel here, and then we have the two combiners, and one is the plus 45 degrees and the other is minus 45 degrees, so it is 90 degrees out of phase. The whole antenna is just held together by a mere 16 screws, so that came off pretty quick. So let's see if we can get the whole antenna array out of the enclosure. I think I will see if I can get it out the bottom. Ah, that needs a hammer. And there it came loose. Whoa! That is completely different than what I thought it would be. I had prepared to see this little uh, squared dipole quads antennas, not this. Wow, this is amazing. Much better than I imagined. So let's get. This whole cover off. There it goes. Wow. What a piece of a technology we have here. See if can we even get everything into the picture. It actually seems we can. So it consists of two times four elements, huge antenna dipoles here. Wow has a lot of nice details and the whole construction with the remote electrical tilt we can see here that turns what looks like two combiners on the back side 
and has a lot of details on the antenna designs here that we will take a closer look at. But also the whole reflector backplane here actually has a consisting slanted U-shape sidewall up along here that has to do with the uh, half power face angle but also gives uh, some loss uh, to the antenna array. But we will take a closer look at that once we uh, get the camera down and can see all the details. Let's check out the back side. Look at that. It's amazing. That is truly amazing. We have the two large face shifters here. Over here we have the input combiners. Move the antenna a bit. The uh, two input combiners and we have the face shifters. And each of these has, of course, we can see the the output goes, or the input from this goes into the phase shifter and the different outputs from this goes out to the different areas. Whoa, that goes everywhere. Before taking everything apart, let's just see if we can do a trace follow of the signals. So if we take a look at the combiner, it has two outputs. Now one cable leads all the way down here to the last phase shifter, so that's not in our know, interest right now. We'll take a look at the other. We can see that the input cable to the phase shifter from the combiner goes over here. Now the other cable that goes out of this goes all the way down here into this yeah, double Y splitter. And if we can follow that cable back again, we end up at this. Now this goes out to uh, one, two, three antenna arrays. And that is a little weird. Why would it do that? Actually it goes out to four. It, m it must, okay, that's a double. Okay, so it seems that we have three arrays in the middle and we have two at the top and bottom. That is somewhat not connected. But then again, if you take a look at the other part here, we have the other face. So we have the plus 45 and minus 45, which is combined on each their side and with the red and white wire, each their side of the dipole array. Looking at the outputs from the phase shifter, we can see it actually has one, two, three, four. And following these outputs, we can see that one goes all the way around here, back to up here. Following the other one, goes down here, there, goes back here, enters up here, and over here, goes around again, goes around again, down there, and the last one goes all the way down there. So it seems that it is only the 900 megahertz signal that is going through the phase shifter and the 1800 megahertz is not a part of the electrical tilt, which also makes sense from the datasheet where it is stated that the 1800 megahertz signal or carrier has a two degree electrical tilt, whereas the 900 megahertz says it has a zero to 10 degree adjustable electrical tilt. So these two phase shifters are only for the 900 megahertz signal. Let's take a closer look at the input combiner. I very gently removed the whole set of screws holding down this actually very heavy piece of uh, metal that's just solid. And we can see the traces of milling out here from a whole large piece. I'm actually wondering if this is I think this is actually solid copper. It's very heavy and non-magnetic. Okay, so there's this uh, kind of gray plastic. Let's see what's underneath that.
Whoa, what is this? How does this even work? Okay, so this should be a combiner of the 1800. Yeah, it's a combiner of the same phase signal, but from the 900 megahertz and from the 18 megahertz signal. So we can see that, mm, let's see which one do we have. This should be the 900 megahertz signal and this should be the 1800 megahertz signal output input ports. But what's up with all these couplings? Wow. And this over here is actually coupled up to the lid. I got no idea what's going on here. So please, someone, if you can yeah, shed some light over this, but because this is just radio frequency black magic. No one has any idea of what goes on here. So while going through the elements of the whole antenna array here, I will bring up some graphics to show you the differences between some of the design choices. Now a antenna array will also always have a reflector plane, which is the bottom metal plate of the whole construction. Now it can also have what you call sidewalls, and that can be three different types. There is ladder, there is U-shape, and there is slanted. And in this case, we can see it has a slanted sidewall. It is kind of the middle way of choices between performance and losses when speaking about the different sidewall designs. It helps narrow or widening the um, half power uh, beam width. And that is of special interest if you want to build a directional antenna or if you want a broad coverage, uh, broad coverage lobe out from the antenna to cover a large area. So let's take a closer look at the two different types of phased dipole antennas sitting inside of it. Starting out with the small simple antenna here, we can see it is a dipole from the two red wires that we have the two 90 degrees out of phase signals sitting opposite of each other. So this makes one dipole and this makes another. Now, even here, you can also see that the signal cable goes up here and the ground connects to this leg and the signal connects to the other leg. So that is a dipole antenna in itself. And then it have its complementary pair sitting 90 degrees out of phase. And again, look at this beautiful, very simple and yet very complex structure. Now, in the middle, we have the small phased array dipole, where you can see again, it's 90 degrees out of phase from the two connections coming from underneath. It's soldered out to its other side of the dipole on each side here with a L bridge. But then there, this is connected completely separate from the large one sitting outside of here. And it has some pretty interesting features. Now, if we look at a phased array dipole like this, we have the base where we have the connection of the uh, wires going in. And then we have the balen, which is the lower part of the dipole here. And then we have the branches with parasitic stops on some of them. We can see here we have some kind of um, yeah, denting, denting out. And, but it's more apparent up here at the ends, also down here, that it just has a little dip down from the round wire. And that is a parasitic stub. Now some of this helps uh, improving the impedance bandwidth of the elements. And these are not that comparable to the uh, traditional square loop dipoles that, yeah, I think the small one is a more traditional design, but here we have the red wire we have here, along with that yellow thicker wire that both actually goes up here and connects out here. So it makes me think that the large antenna could be the receiving antenna. But then again, if you look at the wavelength, it would make sense that the 900 megahertz is twice as big as the 1800 megahertz. So it could also be this is just the 900 megahertz antenna 
and this is the 1800 megahertz. Popping the lid off one of the face shifters, it is quite apparent how simple this really is. We have the input connection going up to a arm that can yeah, travel a distance of actually more than the 10 degrees phase shift, but I guess this is what you need in order to, with the cable length of the, all the coaxial wires and such, the angle of the two circles here is different. So that is why you can have a longer travel distance over here and have the same phase shift as on the smaller. Now I have seen these with one phase shifter for one whole antenna array, so it had actually seven of these arms uh, inside of it. So you just slide this back and forth and it is actually capacitively coupled to the yeah, copper strip that is underneath here. Thank you for watching the teardown of this magnificent piece of RF technology. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing. If you really liked it, please join my channel and support me in getting much more equipment like this to do some nice teardown videos for you guys. So until next time, see ya.